everyone. I hope you are doing well. Uh, I'm Alana. Welcome to my channel where today I wanted to talk about something that is a little bit more serious, um, that I feel like isn't getting a lot of coverage or isn't likely to get a lot of coverage despite the importance of it, because it is very insular to the, uh, games industry. Um, but a lot of people who work in the games industry have been affected by this. So the story on gamesindustry.biz follows a number of tweets last year about the same situation. The headline is, of course, IGDA mishandled complaints of harassment and conduct violations. Um, and a number of developers have come forward and criticized the industry for ignoring the harassment allegations and failing to investigate complaints. And I want to say that, um, you know, before I decided to jump in on this and, and to also call out the International Game Developers Association, who is the IGDA, I have seen all of the documents of evidence that were submitted to the IGDA, and they are extensive. Hundreds of pages of documentation regarding this particular case, um, and, and so many people. <laughs> um, it is unfortunately difficult to talk about uh, to any great length, because when I reached out to a number of people and was like, hey, I, I want to cover this, I want to talk about what happened here, um, of course, a lot of people want to maintain their privacy. So um, it is difficult to navigate, but still something that we need to talk about. Before we get any further into this video, and I even explain the situation to majority of you who maybe don't know what this is about, I wanted to make the note that I think it is extremely important that the IGDA even reaches out and apologizes to the people who were wronged by this situation. They wrote some tweets and they've even been retweeting some of the victims, which is very odd. But at no point have they actually apologized to these people. And I just wanted to get the jump on saying that very, very early. If anyone at the IGDA is watching, if anyone who is a game developer is watching, I know a lot of devs do follow my channel. Before we even get into the bulk of the story, hello IGDA, please reach out and actually apologize to the people who were wronged. Back to the video. Let, let's go over the article here. This is written by Marie D'Alessandri. I really hope that I'm uh, pronouncing her name correctly. It says, in the summer of 2020, the games industry saw a cluster of sexual harassment and abusive workplace scandals at a host of high profile companies, Ubisoft and Insomniac among them. As the situation unfolded, the International Game Developers Association publicly criticized the industry for ignoring harassment allegations and encouraged victims to reach out for the IGDA for support, which is the problem. Um, they did. <laughs> Yet, according to gamesindustry.biz investigation, which I personally uh, am, am willing to back up because I did my own investigation, uh, despite the IGDA's pledge to support victims, it mishandled multiple formal complaints against its own Women in Games Special Interest Group chair and failed to follow on its own policies on how to properly handle such complaints on more than one occasion. Um, so for context, the complaints of harassment and abuse were against someone who was on their Women in Games Special Interest Group chair. Um, and I think that's part of what makes this situation so complicated is that the complicated is not the right word. It's not complicated. This is very clear cut. There's so, so, so much evidence, but I think it's probably that it is publicly difficult for the IGDA to approach because the person who was doing, uh, engaging in, in abuse or harassment is a woman, um, quite a well-known woman in the game development scene. And I think that that probably meant that they just didn't know how to handle it, unfortunately, um, which I don't think is an excuse. Uh, they have a, a full um, policy for responding to harassment complaints, which is, you can find all the details there if you care to dig into that. And from everything that I've seen, it's very clear that they did not um, actually kind of uh, abide to their own policies. So the guidelines describe a zero tolerance policy towards acts of harassment, which the IGDA has already committed to as far back as 2017, saying, we encourage game developers around the world to join the IGDA in adopting a zero tolerance policy towards harassment and violence in committing to a swift and fair response in release and resolution to any complaints in protecting the safety of anyone who has been the victim of harassment and in supporting a diverse and inclusive workplace and community. Last year, IGDA Women in Games Special Interest Group Chair and IGDA Foundation Next Gen Leaders alumna Jennifer Schell stepped down from her position at the IGDA of her own accord of following accusations of manipulation, harassment, and emotional abuse. When the allegations against Schell first emerged publicly, the IGDA said it had previously conducted an investigation into the claims and concluded there wasn't compelling evidence of wrongdoing, so it had decided to maintain Schell in her position. So obviously gamesindustry.biz looked into it again, so did I. Um, there is so much evidence of wrongdoing. There is so much evidence of wrongdoing. Um, I don't want to make this video about Jennifer Schell at all because she's no longer at the IGDA and she has stepped down. And um, I don't know that making this video about Jennifer Schell is helpful to really any of the victims or anybody involved. Um, but a lot of the stuff and, and the thing that I think is the most concerning is that 
she was taking credit for a lot of people's work. Um, so there are a lot of people who still haven't been appropriately credited, uh, like saying that she worked at NASA um, on a program when she absolutely did not. And even her involvement of that was because of someone else and not herself. Um, I don't want to get into the details again because I'm not trying to spotlight Jennifer Scholl in this situation. But not only were there people who were effectively um, bullied out of the industry because of uh, conversations suggesting that they had done things they hadn't and very intentionally manipulative tactics. I'm named in um, one of the documents um, in that Jennifer Scholl was saying stuff about me and uh, I'm, I don't care about that at all. But it can have a lot of impact when somebody inside of an industry is creating a negative uh, whisper network, especially when there's somebody who's seen as being respected and not on the board of the IGDA, which I would say most people watching this video probably aren't familiar with, but the whole game dev scene knows the IGDA. So when it comes from someone who's in that kind of position, it is a position of power. They have a lot of, of uh, impact. They can control people's careers. They can, they can prevent other people from getting jobs. They can really, really negatively impact people. And the evidence is so compelling. So the IGDA clearly made a mistake here. I still think the IGDA is an important organization that has helped people more than hurt people. But as it stands right now, I'm not seeing any accountability. I'm seeing this one post, which I'm very glad that uh, gamesindustry.biz covered. But otherwise, the IGDA needs to continue to serve the industry. We do not want them gone. Uh, the IGDA is is so helpful to a lot of um, just just starting out game devs. Such a valuable organization to the industry that they need to make sure, and we need to make sure that they are doing their best and making sure what they <laughs> said was not compelling evidence of wrongdoing never happens within that organization again. And right now, this story is largely being ignored, and I feel like that is unacceptable. So it goes on to say, GamesIndustry.biz looked into the situation and unveiled a concerning pattern at the IGDA, showing a failure to follow through with internal investigation system the organization itself put in place to handle issues such as harassment and violations of its code of ethics. After hearing complaints about Sherl in 2018, Jen McLean, who was executive director of both IGDA and IGDA Foundation until April 2019, encouraged a group of complainants to file a formal complaint, which it did in early 2019. A collective of 11 complainants put together a 16-page document alleging targeted bullying and toxic behavior and sent it to the IGDA Foundation. The complaint, a copy of which has been shared with gamesindustry.biz, documents a history of deception, bullying, defamation, and abuse. Again, I've seen this and I agree. Showing breaches of the IGDA Foundation's code of conduct that Shell was meant to follow as a member of the Next Gen Leader Program. It's worth mentioning that the program is intended to support mid-career games industry professionals as they transition to leadership roles, which again is also a very important thing because the games industry is full of people who just get promoted because they've been there for a long time and not because they're good leaders. It's a real problem. Uh, as indicated on the IGDAF's website with a focus on diversity and inclusivity. And it's unfortunate that in this situation, it seems that the people who were um, targeted uh, were largely women. So even if a woman is the perpetrator, she was still um, very much hurting and defaming other women um, and negatively affecting their careers, though it was not only limited to women. So, you know, if you're still focused on diversity and inclusivity, I don't think it's inclusive to ignore harassment from a woman that is still at the expense of other women. Not that it would be okay to ignore harassment at the expense of men either. I'm not saying that I think men should be harassed. That's certainly not the case. But it clearly does not focus on diversity and inclusivity, perhaps just the appearance of it. Article goes on to say, the IGDA Foundation's Code of Conduct explicitly states that unacceptable behavior includes intimidating, harassing, abusive, discriminatory, derogatory, or demeaning conduct. The complaint received in 2019 depicts unprofessional conduct from Sherl that can be qualified as intimidating and demeaning, including taking credit for the work of others. Again, this is the part of this that I think is a huge and, and really devastating problem that I've spoken to so many people involved about. Um, not everybody, I don't have contact with everybody uh, who this has happened to, but the ones that I have, um, literally like years and years of work that that um, this person took credit for and then ran with and built a career on top of, and that stuff still hasn't been publicly corrected. And I did ask a number of people if they would like um, me to say something to try to publicly correct their resumes effectively, but it seemed to most people that as long as the, the Whisper Network exists and people know that um, this is the case, it doesn't need to be super public, like it can be fixed internally within the games industry. And I hope that that's true um, because I guess people are scared about, you know, having a public spotlight on them regarding that kind of thing, which I think is totally fair. It's all very scary. 
goes on to say, the complaint also shows a group of games industry professionals, some of them veterans in their field, clearly uncomfortable working alongside Shell and with her being a part of the Next Gen Leader program and asking the IGDA Foundation to do something about it. But the complaint was dismissed by the organization, which said there wasn't enough evidence. Part of this um, was that they were told there wasn't enough evidence, so they went and got more. And there's so much. <laughs> there's so much evidence. I. It's so shocking. I respect that if somebody comes forward about anything that you should be like, okay, we need to actually do our due diligence and look into this. And I do think that that's important that as an organization that they should put the work into to vet these kinds of things. There's so much evidence. It's overwhelming how much there is. My God. It says, at the time, confidentiality was even breached as the content of the complaint was discussed within the IGDAF and we were told someone who knew and supported Shell reached out to one of the complainants about the document, the content of which was supposed to be confidential. So they were supposed to be submitting this thing confidentially, but it was clearly discussed internally and then kind of spread, which is also unfortunate. The IGDA Foundation later apologized to the complainant for breaching confidentiality, which, cool, thanks. <laughs> So McLean stepped down from her position as executive director with the IGDA and IGDA Foundation before the Shell investigation was concluded, but encouraged the group to officially file their complaint at the IGDA as well. In 2020, a collective of 14 victims and six allies lodged a formal complaint against Jennifer Shell with the IGDA, which was then headed by executive director Renee Giddens. Renee Gittens, sorry. The 34-page document details the multiple counts of personal abuse and professional breaches carried out by Jennifer Shaw between the period of 2017 and 2020, and the IGDA policy for responding to harassment complaints states that the organization will investigate incidents committed by or to an employee, staff member, board member, IGDA chapter slash SIG leader, volunteer, or general member of the IGDA, or if the incident took place at an IGDA-affiliated event, gathering, or workshop online or in person, and both of those things happened. Um, pretty clearly both of those things happened. So the article then breaks down the IGDA policy um, at length. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to read this thoroughly, but I'm trying not to lose you here because there is a lot of information. <laughs> there is a follow-up here that was the total. There is another follow-up here about, um, yeah, the IGDA asking for more elements to support the case, which they did in December of 2020, sorry. And it added 78 pages. Again, I have read those. Across both of the formally submitted complaints, the people who submitted them alleged that Jennifer Scholl had breached the IGDA code of ethics by appropriating and claiming the work of her peers as her own. She totally did and provided evidence of such claims. It also accused Scholl of grooming, emotional, ma emotional manipulation, harassing and ostracizing other industry members, particularly other women, and physically assaulting one of the complainants as well. And this in part all came out uh, because of this in 2020, upon learning that Scholl had been nominated for a Game Dev Hero Award, uh, 10 women from across the games industry filed an objection with the organizers. Following a conversation with the complainants, the organizers removed her from consideration for the award. This information was confirmed by a uh, Game Dev Hero spokesperson who also confirmed that the IGDA didn't contact them to confirm or inquire about the situation. She did also get inside of the Game Awards inaugural future, future class, um, but was removed uh, as a reaction to the allegations coming forward. And there was also a note of the fact that the IGDA added that Shell had come under investigation for inappropriate workplace behavior at a previous employer, but left before the investigation was concluded. So yeah, um, obviously this is extremely wordy. And the general synopsis uh, is that the IGDA did not take the situation seriously despite their own harassment policies and what they preach essentially. Again, not trying to shut down the IGDA. I think what they do is important, but I do think that they need to be held accountable to make sure that they're doing their job correctly. There are, um, this is stuff that I actually didn't know about in this article, uh, a number of other sources who came forward with complaints about the IGDA, talking about there being a gap in communication and the system just being very broken and uh, basically saying it's not like they don't care. There's just definitely a thing of keeping a very positive outlook, even in how they word their emails. Everything is very positive. There's nothing negative. So when you bring up things that are negative, they're always addressed in a positive way, <laughs> sickeningly positive. So that is an issue. That's true. Sometimes you need to be negative to deal with negative things. They added that the IGDA isn't giving game developers the association they deserve as communication attempts are weak and the organization isn't listening to the complaints sent its way, which is probably very difficult. I would think in reality, the IGDA should be hiring somebody who is an expert and knows how to deal with this kind of stuff. And they did actually respond, um, apologizing for the lack of appropriate support and recognizing the importance of upholding policies and standards. 
They said the IGDA maintains follow-up correspondence with complainants and communicates conclusions of investigations to parties directly involved in reported violations. However, in one of our recent ethics investigations, we reviewed materials submitted to us and conducted an interview with the accused before concluding there was insufficient evidence of wrongdoing. The approach failed to adhere to the IGDA policy for responding to harassment complaints established in April of 2018 as we relied on written statements and did not conduct individual interviews of the name witnesses and materials, which is also wild. They didn't reach out to the victims and ask them for their input. They reached out to the harasser and asked them for input. <laughs> what? Again, the point is that they apologize for this, though. They are apologizing. They say, we apologize for not providing proper support and communication to everybody with serious concerns. It is one of our top priorities that all of our members feel their concerns will be treated appropriately. So they have now updated their policy for responding to harassment complaints um, and created a more comprehensive IGDA ethics violation and harassment investigation process. And I just really, really, really hope that they are held accountable and that this happens. There is also a report by uh, Luke Plunkett on Kotaku. And then we have this tweet from Anna Brandberg here who said, whew, I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> After almost four years of working on this, I can't believe we finally, we can finally talk openly about it. Jennifer Shaw lied, manipulated, stole other people's work and left a trail of destruction in every country she fled to because she did uh, travel a lot. And then the IGDA continuously chose to protect her. Anna said, the IGDA's inaction after our repeated and detailed statements of complaint allowed Jennifer to continue causing harm to more people in various communities and countries around the world. I held them partly responsible for the harm that she continued to cause since 2018. I've spoken to so many victims who share eerily similar stories detailing her patterns of abuse and deception. So have I personally um, spoken to a number of people who had very similar experiences. Many are still dealing with the aftermath of the damage she caused, not just emotional, but also physical to this day. <clears throat> Several also had their careers severely impacted. While some things would have been understandably tricky for the IGDA to action, e.g. statements about personal experiences, they shouldn't have been simply dismissed. But how could they ignore things that were so blatant, e.g. stealing other people's work with so much evidence provided? And that is the really confusing part. And how did Jennifer have the audacity to claim such absurdishly big things like having made games with NASA as her own work and winning awards for it, while the people who actually did the work on various teams were harassed and silenced to the point of a long-term trauma? I still can't believe the IGDA chose to do nothing. I can't believe that despite statements from so many people and countless pages of clear evidence, they still chose to stand by her. Jennifer used her role at the IGDA as a shield to shirk accountability and, and protect herself from critique. But mostly I can't believe they still haven't contacted any of us what? since the we decided to do nothing email and that we had to find their admission of fault as well as their apology to us at the bottom of an article, having only sent it to an investigative journalist instead. IGDA and IGDAF have done so much incredible work through the years. I, for one, wouldn't even be in the games industry today if it weren't for the next gen leaders program. But being grateful for the good they've done doesn't mean we can't hold them accountable when they fail us. And I think this is a really important tweet. I think there are also cases to be made um, where a lot of people involved feel like Jennifer Shell did do a lot of really good advocacy work. So they think that she, even while she was, uh, even while she was being abusive to a number of people, was on the outside being very helpful. And I had a really similar experience um, with a woman in the games industry as well, who I was like, publicly, she's so helpful and does such good work. But to me, she's awful. And so I was always just like, I will just let her do the good stuff publicly and just ignore her. Otherwise, and this is a completely separate woman. Thankfully, only one of them. Everyone else is pretty great. But I've always been like, I will support you, continue to do what you do. But wow, were you an asshole to me? <laughs> and it can be a really complicated thing for people to wrap their heads around and figure out how to tackle is like, but if what you do is generally good and what you just do to me is kind of abusive, then I will take the generally good and just ignore like the reputational damage stuff that you're doing. It's very complicated. And I think this is an important note here too from Anna who says, several people over the past years have asked me what my desired outcome is with all of this. Ideally, I want public acknowledgement of harm caused, a correction of accreditation for stolen work and a proper apology to her victims from IGDA too, but mostly from Jennifer Scholl, who still is not properly apologized to victims. Um, I believe she just kind of left Twitter when it happened. And yeah, I have spoken to a number of people involved again about the public acknowledgement of, of the, um, the work that they did that she took credit for. But yeah, unfortunately a lot of people ended up being like, ah, I don't know that I'm comfortable with this being broadcast in this way. So I really hope that this can be corrected, um, in a more kind of internal to the games industry way, because it is really important. It can make or break your career when somebody steals credit for the work that you did. That certainly happened to me in my career, just not quite to the extent that it happened with Jennifer Scholl to a lot of people. And it can be really frustrating to deal with and definitely damaging um, and can, you know, make you want to leave an industry. So that is unfortunately complicated, 
But I hope that any of the game devs who watch this, because I know there are a number of people in, in dev who are subscribed to my YouTube channel, that you are aware um, of this situation and that you know that if there are things that you saw Jennifer Shell get credit for, if you know of her, that you make the effort in your brain to go, oh, that was probably other people on the team or other people may deserve credit for this. Um, because there were things where people would say, oh, like, is that Jenny's game? Even though it was a game that she had barely worked on and a bunch of other people made it, which is a really unfortunate thing um, that got obviously very out of hand. So yeah, this is not an easy thing to talk about by any means, but I think the point is that I want to talk about it. I want to make sure people know about it. We're not trying to get the IGDA shut down. Um, and the, the takeaway should be that hopefully this can lead to something positive, that they do take these kind of complaints more seriously in the future. That we do consider that um, even people who would be minorities in positions of power can be capable of abuse. And that taking credit for other people's work makes you a fucking asshole. <laughs> there are a lot of really, really, really talented people who had that taken away from them, um, who hopefully as a result of you know this being spoken about and this coming out, that can be fixed, there, there can be a change there. I am aware that most of my audience will be unfamiliar with any of this and what I'm talking about, but I mean, maybe that's part of the point is that now you know, the IGDA is the International Game Developers Association. They did not adhere to their own harassment policies. They effectively supported somebody who had over a hundred pages of documentation uh, regarding allegations of abuse and harassment, all of which is extremely compelling and thorough and that the organizations that are there to support people in game development really need to do a better job of supporting people in game development. And hopefully this is a turning point for that. I will leave a link to the article below to everybody who is involved in this. I hope you are okay. I'm so sorry that this happened. It sucks. And I always feel like we, we need to just speak up when we see this stuff happening because the truth is there's probably a lot of people who are affected by this situation who thought it was just happening to them or were like gaslit, who, who felt like it was their fault when really it wasn't, it happened to a lot of people on a global scale and everybody was um, very shy about speaking up. And of course it's hard to speak up. It's terrifying. I, I at least hope it's comforting that um, none of these people were alone. That is it for me today, everybody. I will see you guys next time. Bye.